I don't think there's anything else I can do there. I really need, like, River Shapers to come into that matchup. Because it's like, I can have a bad hand if my matchup's okay, but bad hand, bad matchup. Doesn't really work out. Do I, am I keeping Chain Vest? I mean, they're running like three Vile Feasts. This is like the matchup, right? This is like the, the keep Chain Vest matchup. What does Control deck mean? Control is an archetype that plays very slow for long-term advantage by like... Kill, spending their resources killing your things and decelerating the uh, flow of the game. So basically, time is always on the side of the control player. Usually. Like, for the most part, if you're against the player, and these are decks like Freljord, Shadow Isles, and, you know, like, PNZ sometimes. Like, it basically means they play very slow games, and you, as an opponent, want to be ending games fast. Like, where he he's running, like, Progress Day... And just getting like super, super late, like long term value, basically. This looks okay. By my blade. Pass, see if we get standalone. I think chain vesting into the attack is good. few things he could do here that are a li little annoying. Mark of the Isles is the biggest thing that's pretty annoying. Um, and there's not a ton we can do about that. I can just take a return to hand. I mean, the question is, should I return the Fiora to my hand? If I return his card to his hand, he gets the Ephemeral gets wiped, so he's just getting a Soul Shepherd. If I return Fiora to my hand, I lose three mana, but his card gets deleted forever. So it depends whether we're playing fast or slow. And this is this is it. Like when playing fast, I say those words a lot. Playing fast means prioritizing mana as a resource. Playing slow means prioritizing cards as a resource. So like playing fast would be, you know, using the will on his card and keeping the Fiora developed with the chain vest. And the chain vest is is powerful. Um He could I mean he doesn't have death mark. I think you you would you would put death mark on that Stack. Eh, maybe he wouldn't actually. If he's if he's got it. Wow, he's thinking about this. So he has deny or death mark, and that's bad for us. Okay, so yeah, there's nothing else I can do here. That kind of sucks. I mean, I don't think there's really a different play I can make there. Like, I wish there was. They cannot Do you instantly lose the game now? No, I've got Kinko. It feels bad that I don't have standalone. Like, I have a bad hand. This deck really is pretty reliant on standalone or maybe some buff. Like, this is the kind of hand state where the second uh, Lauren Bladekeeper feels a bit better. Just surrender. Guys, this this deck you, wins with a Fiora like 30% of its wins. Like, that's a bad exchange, but I'm fine. I'm unfavored, but I was unfavored on off of the opening hand already. Will on Fiora plays around that. Yeah, Will on Fiora was probably better there, just because Deathmark was definitely something he could be having. I agree. Silent death. I will play my part. <sighs> they have two more Furies? Yeah, but I mean, you don't have good odds at like drawing them. What happened to Wayfinder in this? This is a different deck that it's. I'm not playing for Green Glade Caretakers at all. This is Tide's version of the list. It's very good. Like, it's a lot more competitive than the Green Glade Caretakers, which I was saying, like, just aren't really great in the list. Um, uh, I guess that's a deny? I don't know. I mean, honestly, 
There's a there's a call to not deny that and just take a judgment. But deny is very well in his range right now. Because if you had deny and death mark, I, th I think he would easily take that deny there. Or the death mark there. So he has his own deny as well. Okay, and... Uh, I guess we will kill the Hecarim now. I mean, we have to, right? So at one, he could have, like, Mark of the Isles, number two. And if he has Mark of the Isles, number two, then that's hilarious, and he's he's got it in. Show the Mark. And we're good. Where's Karma? I don't own Karma. So yeah, we're probably good after that exchange. That's like, sort of why Dawn and Dusk is a, is a meme card. Like, when you play that card, you, you do run the risk of just kind of losing. The order rewards its faithful. You're just two for one yourself again? Well, I had to. I have no choice. My training is unconventional. I mean, we already gave him the slow speeds play. It's not like he's sitting on like a, a dark water scourge. That wouldn't make any sense. So I think that's fine. I'm just gonna cycle this river shaper. I just wanted to turn it to something else, actually. How did that move go? Sure. But yeah, I mean, I'm probably fine here. It really depends on his hands. That's the thing about this deck, like, the fact that we're just, like, basically, like, cheesing with elusives is, like, a really, really big ult win condition. Like, this deck has a lot of different win conditions. Light it through, right? That never really matters. Um, I mean, River Shaper looks pretty good. I want to just be blocking with River Shaper here, right? Blocking with one of my flyers feels kind of risky for no reason, right? And I'm not losing to single mark. We want to make sure we play around the range of single mark, so single mark doesn't kill us. He didn't have it last turn, but he could have top decked it. Them down. So the question is, do we need to use this uh, refuge card? Is it vulnerable to anything? Uh, I actually can't really think of a good reason not to use this. It's kind of always like peaking at this moment. Like I lose deny mana. I don't think I needed deny mana. Like he can do a few cute things. So right away he's not on like vile feast. Yeah, his hand is pretty bricked out. He probably has like a second Dawn and Dusk or something super trolly like that. So we'll threaten the lethal with the four elusives while Step keeping lightly. mana up for deny and single combat. Our two tricks. He's got Shadow Assassin. And we've got another elusive. This last elusive only keeps the mana up for um, deny. But it means we're still playing outside of the range of Ruination, which is... Kind of the only thing you can do here. Strike for the balance. If we did like a single combat, we can sometimes just lose to a ruination for no reason. So, see if he has any like weird healing or something. Still. Oh god, there, there's such a specific hand state that gets punished by using deny here. It's like, it's not impossible that this deny is wrong. It actually isn't. It's so, so, so weird. 
It's like if his hand is like deny ruination or something like that, then this deny is wrong. Like if his last card is ruination, we just lost by denying there. It's like literally, there, there's like three specific combinations of cards in the entire game that punish that. A gift from the river folk. <sighs> Seven, seven. I mean, he's not on ruination. This doesn't make his plays any better. It loses our ability to use judgment. Judgment is kind of all right, but we can't use it with twin disciplines anyway. I'm a little scared about third deny, actually. I don't know, judgment's like a really trolly card. Let's leave the options open. Okay, so now we know his hand. That feels pretty good. So double single combat is necessary, so we're already ruled out on judgment. We can just go ahead and kill him here. They cannot strike what they cannot see. Okay. So he's dead next turn. Yeah, we're not gonna let him lifesteal, obviously. So, you tank the 8 to the face, you put the blockers like that, you put the blockers like that, and then you single combat this into, I guess one of them going here is fine, I mean we're not losing to like a lay dress or anything, and then the other one going into this? I mean, it doesn't really matter since we're not killing anything, right? So you want to block like that, and then we're alive at 9, and he's not life-stealing. So that's the most important thing, basically. You take a you take a block in the way that you designate the blockers, and then you suicide them, so he doesn't get to engage in combat with his Dark Water Scourges. So they're both dying without life-stealing him at all. So the blocker is designated, our unit's dead, it, gets to, it doesn't get to fight anything at all, and we push lethal next turn. And there shouldn't be any top decks that save him here. Especially not with that card. So we're good. Yeah, I really like single combat in this deck. I think single combat is just a really, really powerful card, actually. It's pretty insane. <laughs> 